have today two short sermons that were apparently preached on the same day by James Rennick, and uh, they're numbered uh, Sermon 24 and 25 in his uh, book of sermons. The scripture text is Matthew chapter 3, verse 10. Matthew 3, verse 10. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth forth not, which bringeth not forth good fruit, is hewn down, and cast into the fire. The gospel is an inestimable treasure, and is made up of many rare and choice rubies of great price, far beyond the chiefest pearls and preciousest stones that the world can afford. What can the heart of man devise or desire, but it is to be found in the field of the gospel? But though it be such an inestimable and matchless treasure, yet how few are there that attain to anything of the knowledge of the worth thereof? I, how few, get the knowledge of the worth thereof? How few are there that get such knowledge of this pearl that makes them sell all that they have and buy it? But woe and wrath will be to you if you get not good of this gospel. Better for you, ye had been born in that place of the world where the gospel was never preached nor heard tell of, and in a place where Christ and salvation had not been freely offered and holden forth to you. But now Christ hath been freely offered to you in the gospel, and yet ye are not the better thereof, but slight the same. Yea, ye slight Christ in his offers, and woe will be to you in so doing. Would ye know the great sin of this age and the great sin of Scotland? It is even this, that they have not put that esteem upon the gospel that they ought to have done. And this declares that before ye lose anything or put anything in hazard for it, ye will rather part with Christ and with all his free offers in the gospel. What ails our lairds that they come not out to hear the gospel preached? They dare not for fear of losing their estates. But many will lose their souls in saving their estates. And curse the day that ever they were lords or lairds. For by saving their lands and honors they will lose their immortal souls. There is a great profession and many professors in this generation, but all we fear few have received Christ into their hearts. What is the sin wherefore this great God is contending with us at this time? It is even this, that he hath fully and freely offered his Son, Jesus Christ, to us in the gospel, and we have slighted and despised him. This is the great sin of Scotland. We have slighted and undervalued the Son of God. He hath been these many years knocking at the door of our hearts, but few have opened and let him in which is the great sin, wherefore he hath been contending with us these many years past. But woe will be to thee that holds this king at the door and still declares by thy practice that thou wilt have none of him. For he cares not what ye profess, as long as your practice speaks the contrary. Now John the Baptist, Christ's forerunner, comes forth here and preaches, and there comes forth with a fourth a great multitude, as there is here today, to hear him. Many whereof are in hell this day. And we fear it be so with many of you, for your countenance declares that ye are an obdurate and an impenitent generation. Here John deals very freely with this generation that he was sent unto by calling them a generation of vipers and forewarning them of their danger. And oh, that we might be so with you, that so we might be free of your blood. Bring forth, says he, fruit, meet for repentance. And then the argument he makes use of is this. The axe is laid to the root of the trees, and every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Even as if he had said, The axe of God's wrath is laid to the root of every professor, and these professors who bring not forth good fruit shall be hewn down and cast into hell. Many of you think not much of the hearing 
of preachings. But there is not a preaching that you hear that ye are not wrought upon by to make you forsake your sin and to draw near unto God. But it is a stroke given you with his acts to take the life of your souls. Now a stroke this Sabbath, and if you get a preaching the next Sabbath, it is another stroke. And so one stroke after another, till at length he plunged down into the fire of hell. Now in these words which I have read, we have first the condition of these who are under the means of grace and salvation and never bettered thereby. The axe is laid to the root of all such trees and is ready to cut them down. The justice of God is standing with the axe of God's wrath ready to hew you down. And we fear it be so with the most part of you, ye that are the dry and withered professors that have come these many years to follow after ordinances and are never profited thereby and have never been persuaded to leave of and forsake your sins. O oh, set about this work of holiness and righteousness, which is meant by the good fruit, for the axe is ready to cut you down. When David saw the destroying angel standing over against Jerusalem with a sword drawn in his hand, David thought that a, that a fearful sight. But we tell you and warn you of it, the great God is marching on the forefront of his host, coming against Scotland, and will take vengeance upon all that have been slighters of this son, of his son, Christ Jesus. Second, we have in these words the Lord's impartial dealing with all these persons. Every man and every woman, great and small, rich and poor, no exception of persons with him. For whoever they be, that he finds barren and fruitless, they shall be hewn down and cast into the fire. Power and moying among men causes this person and the other person to get favor and be spared. But it will not be so with him, for there will be no respect of persons with him. But he who they will, but be who they will, be they rich, be they poor, be they old, be they young, none shall be spared that will be found fruitless and barren souls. If ye be found an old stock without fruit, he shall be hewn down and cast into the fire of hell. Third, we have that in the words which makes persons the objects of God's wrath. And it is this, even the want of good fruit. Fourth, we have the sentence they get. They are hewn down and cast into the fire. The sentence is passed already. We have all gotten the sentence. And if we get not faith and repentance... There is no recalling of the sentence again, no eviting of burning in hell to all eternity. This shall be the lot of all barren souls. The fifth thing we have to take notice of here is the dreadfulness of the punishment that shall be inflicted upon the barren trees. If it were but such a punishment wherewith men punish to have a leg or an arm, or though it were the head cut off, that were but an ordinary punishment it were nothing to bide it, but they will be hewn down and cast into hell's fire. Sixth and lastly, we have the duration of this misery and torment. If it were for an hundred or a thousand or ten thousand years, and then to be delivered of it, there would be some ground of comfort, but there is no escaping or outwinning throughout all eternity. And there the worm will never die and the fire will never be quenched. If ye knew and believed your hazard, there would be another sort of a stir among you than there is. The father would say to the child, What will we do, child, if we be cast into hell and there be tormented throughout all et eternity? The husband would say to the wife and the wife to the husband, What will we do if we be thrown down to hell and there tormented through eternity? But oh, there are few such fears and few such questions we apprehend amongst you. We had occasion elsewhere to speak of the first two of these things observed from the words. Now we come to the third observation, which is this. What makes persons the objects of God's wrath? We tell you from the Lord 
there are many that many in that unquenchable fire of hell that find the truth of it to their sad experience that did as little look for it as many of you do that are now tormented with the torments that we are telling you of they are roasting and tormenting in these flames of hell and what is the reason of it if you had access to commune with them they would tell you that their unbelief and not turning to God from the evil of their ways and not bringing forth fruit unto God was the cause of all their misery. Now what is the main and only thing that exposes people to this sad and miserable condition? We answer that it is for the want of good fruit. The ground that is often rained upon and bring, bringeth not forth good fruit is near to cursing and the end to be burnt. And we fear it be so with you in this place of the country. Galloway hath been often watered with the gospel when other places have been dry. So if you bring not forth good fruit, ye are near to cursing. You may read Luke 13, 6, 7, 8, 9, which is supposed to be a conference betwixt mercy and justice. Justice pleading to have vengeance executed. Mercy crying, spare them until they get another shower of ordinances. Spare them till they get another offer of Christ and of salvation through him. And then if they embrace him not and bring not forth fruit to his praise, I shall plead for them no more, but shall give you leave to execute wrath and vengeance upon them. It is even as a gardener were going through his orchard and where he finds a dry and withered branch, he takes his hedging knife and cuts it from the tree and brings it in and casts it on the fire. And so shall it be with everyone that brings not forth good fruit. They shall be cut down and cast into the fire of hell. But it may be, well say, seeing good fruit is so absolutely necessary, what is requisite to the bringing forth of good fruit? In answer to this, first I shall speak someone, somewhat concerning that. Second, I shall speak to some assertions from this doctrine against some of the errors that we are like to have to do in our day and time. And third, I shall make application. Now for the first, what is requisite to the bringing forth of good fruit, saith the trembling soul? Oh, is there any such among you this day? But in answer to this, we say these things are necessary. First, it is requisite that the tree be good. Would you bring forth good fruit? I must tell you, the tree must be good before the fruit be good, for a corrupt tree cannot bring forth good fruit. But you may say, what, what is it to have the tree good? I will tell you, it is this. You must be transplanted. We grow all in a very bare, base and barren soil so long as we are in the state of nature. Ye that are in this estate, and oh, we fear that there be many such here, so long as you continue in it, your most holy performances are like the cutting off a dog's neck and the murdering of men. Isaiah 66.3 So till you be taken out of that old stock of nature and planted in the new and living vine, Christ Jesus, you cannot bring forth any good fruit. Let you multiply as many duties as you please, though you should pray till your knees fail under you, and though you should deal all that you have to the poor. Let you do never so many good works, they will be to no purpose, so long as ye are in the state of nature. Therefore, shall we ask all of you these questions. Are ye in the state of nature or in the state of grace? Are ye converted or unconverted? Are ye in Christ or out of Christ? Are ye servants unto God or are ye servants unto Satan? Oh, ye will ask, will ye ask these and such like questions at yourselves and at one another? For if ye be in a state of nature, all your performances are but adding sin to sin. Therefore arise and cry night and day unto the great husbandman that he would come and cut you off the old stock that ye have long grown upon and plant you into his blessed Son, Jesus Christ who is the true and living vine. John 15, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. This is the union that is betwixt Christ and his people, 
and all the members of his mystical body. And let me tell you, if ye be strangers to this union, ye are strangers to partaking of the benefits of his death and sufferings. Ye are strangers to the having and entertaining of communion and fellowship with him here. And if ye be so, ye shall be debarred from having any communion and fellowship with him to all eternity. Now what is it to be planted in this noble and living vine, but to believe in his name? As ye have it in John 6, He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. That is, to eat his flesh and drink his blood by faith. It is nothing else then but believing in his name. So long then as ye are strangers to closing with Christ upon his own terms, all your prayers and all your coming to preachings is but the heaping up of wrath upon your own heads. Therefore we advise you to labor to know what it is to be engrafted in the true and living vine, that so you may bring forth good fruit, for till then all the fruit that you, make, that you bring forth will be but evil fruit. O oh, many an ill tree is here this day, but few good. O oh, that you would cry mightily to God, that he would send forth his spirit to convince you of sin and misery. And oh, that ye might all be disquieted and find no rest in your consciences from the sight and sense of sin and misery till ye be necessitated to flee by faith unto Jesus Christ and get the union made up betwixt him and your souls. Second, it is requisite for the bringing forth good fruit that it be according to the word of God. Your fruit must be according to his will revealed in his word. They that, that cast at his word from being their rule, be their shows and pretenses what they will, they have nothing of that which he will account good fruit. Whatever be the blind zeal of papists and Quakers, as it hath not a ground in the word of God, so it is but ill fruit in his sight. Therefore let the will and command in his word be eyed by you in all that you do, and then it will be looked on as good fruit. Third is requisite in the bringing forth good fruit that it please God. We fear many of you please yourselves because ministers and other professors are pleased with you. Oh, many in these lands at this time are greatly deceiving themselves by pleasing themselves with that which is not pleasing to God. Your ware must be such as will please the merchant of which you may see in that word Hebrews 13:16. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. For it is that which is pleasing to him that is good fruit. But some of you may be questioning within yourselves and saying, Oh, if I knew what fruit would please him. In answer to this, I say, First, what ye do must be done in faith. Hebrews 11.6 Without faith it is impossible to please him. Luther says, they that go about to please God without faith go about to please him with sin. Then if you would please God, you must first be believers. You must accept of Christ and close with him by faith. And then, if once you were in him, you shall be fit for performing such duties as will be pleasing to him. But never until then. Second, if you would bring forth fruit while pleasing to God, then Whatever duties you go about, you must go about them with a dependence upon Jesus Christ. We fear many of you go about your prayers without Christ, and then they are but sin. Ye that go to him in your own strength without depending on Jesus Christ, you and your prayers will both be rejected, for he is our high priest who makes atonement for us. So you must go to God through Christ and depend upon him for acceptance both to your person and performances, and then will ye be well-pleasing to God, but not until then. Oh, but it be sad that so many of you should live so long under ordinances and yet remain ignorant of the way to obtain salvation. Third, if you would bring forth good fruit, such as will be well-pleasing unto God, then you must get all your furniture from Christ for going about all your duties. Whenever you go to prayer, either by yourself or with others, look to him for furniture. 
And then will your duties be well-pleasing to his Father, and so be looked upon as good fruit. But oh, many have ground to mourn for their duties as well for their sins, because they go about them in their own strength. Fourth, would you bring forth good fruit? Then whatever ye do, ye must eye the glory of God in it. 1 Corinthians 10.31 Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. See then that whatever ye do, ye have a warrant for it in his word, and do it in faith, with an eye to his glory, and then it will be accepted of as good fruit. Five, would you bring forth good fruit and labor to have your duties flowing from a principle of love to God? We fear a natural conscience puts many of you to your prayers and brings you forth to your meetings. Who of you dare say that it is love to him and to his ordinances that brings you forth to preachings? And who of you does love, con- uh, and who of you does love constrain to rise up in the morning and to go on your knees to seek the Lord? And who of you does love constrain to read his word and to meditate upon it? And who of you does love constrain to supply his distressed members in their their necessities? You may try yourselves if it be so with you, but oh, we fear that fear of hell puts many to their duty because the natural conscience will not let the soul have peace to let go about duties. But love to God and making conscience in obeying his commandments must put you to your duty or no acceptance with God for you. For otherwise you will, be not, you will not be looked upon as these that bring forth good fruit. Fourth main point, it is requisite to the bringing forth of good fruit that there be an honest heart such as the psalmist prays for Psalm 119.80 Let my heart be found in thy statutes that I be not ashamed. Oh, many play the hypocrite with God. They draw near with their mouths and do honor him with their lips when their hearts are far removed from him. Such fruit as that will not please God. Who of you dare say that you are not hypocrites? Are your hearts present with God as your bodies are present here? And are you sending up your hearts to God by prayer? If it be so that ye are darting up ejaculations to him in the time of his worship. It is well. Ye may have ground to hope that ye are of these that are bringing forth good fruit. But are ye of these that are satisfying themselves with bringing their bodies here and letting their hearts go with the fool's eyes through the ends of the earth? Then remember that word that ye have, Malachi 1.14. But cursed be the deceiver which hath in his stock a male and voweth and sacrifices unto the Lord a corrupt thing. Oh, but sincerity be much worth in the sight of the Lord. David says in Psalm 139, 23, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me. If ye be not upright and sincere before God, your fruit is not good fruit. Five, also it is requisite if you would bring forth good fruit, that you bring forth fruit in season. Psalm 1, 3. You may say, what is it to bring forth fruit in season? I answer, if you would bring forth fruit in season, you must not confound duties. As for instance, when you are hearing preaching, as you are doing now, you must not be muttering and praying. For hearing the word preached is one duty and prayer is another. And you must go about your spiritual duties in their season and your civil duties in their season. Indeed, it is seasonable that that the first road you go on in the morning be to God, to pour out your hearts before him, and then read his word and meditate upon it and pray for his blessing upon it. And labor to keep your hearts with God through the day. And upon the Sabbath day, search out your idols and endeavor to get a stroke upon them that sin may be subdued under you. And search out your wants and lay them out before the Lord that he may supply them. For these are seasonable fruits unto the Lord. But oh, how many are there that satisfy themselves with the bare forms of duties and press not for the power and life of godliness. 
How many are there that satisfy themselves with a few words in the morning and evening to quiet their guilty consciences without any sense of the evil of sin or need that they are in of Christ or any spiritual life upon their soul and take no care to keep their hearts through the day but can let faith and conscience flee upon every small temptation. These are very evil and unseasonable fruits. Oh, but there are very few who bear and bring forth seasonable fruit in this day we live in. But oh, study to make your calling and election sure now when the Lord is threatening to make an end of us by his judgments. I charge all of you to be pious, to be at pains about this. What if this acts of his wrath hew you down before you get your calling and election made sure? And then what shall your misery be but eternal separation from his presence? Oh, will you remember that although many are called, yet few are chosen? Many are called by the outward call of the gospel, but few called by the inward call of the Spirit. Oh, rest not until you get it made sure that you belong to the Lord. For I fear that if the devil had his own amongst uh, own from amongst you, we would be uh, but a very small company. Therefore make this sure that ye are brought from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. But oh, we fear that many of you have sit your time. Therefore delay no longer, for if death find you in the state of nature, then there will be no remedy for you. You shall be hewn down with this axe of God's justice and cast into the fire of hell, out of which there will be no redemption. The Lord make you to consider it in time, and to him be praise. Amen. Sermon 25, same text. Matthew 3, verse 10, And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Where will ye all be ere it be long? Truly, ere thirty or forty years go about, the most part of us will be in little bulk, for we will be either in heaven or hell. Ye are now well gathered out, and ye sit close. But ere it be long, we shall be as far sundry as Lazarus and Dives were. Many of you get leave to eat and drink, and keep company with the righteous. But ere many years run, ye shall be as far sundry as Lazarus and the rich glutton are. Should ye not be taken up to know where your eternal dwellings will be? Many are taken up with houses and lands to get an inheritance made sure to themselves and others. And many in seeking and keeping the world lose their immortal souls. But oh, how few are seeking the house which is not made with hands that is eternal in the heavens. 2 Corinthians 6 1. Oh, well, where will the most part of you be ere it be long? We fear you will be burning in the flames of God's wrath. Many of you are living at peace and ease now. But if you bring not forth other sort of fruit than you have done, ere long you shall be burning in the flames of God's wrath. And this is an evidence of it that, that we see that you are no more concerned at the hearing of this than if you were brute beasts. Oh, that we knew what would prevail with you. If we knew what would do it, we would even venture our flesh and our blood for you. Though there be but one thing needful, oh, how few of you choose that good part, that part that cannot be taken from you. Oh, how many Marthas in this day, though it be a very evil time, that are taken up with nothing but the, but the house and the corn and the cattle, but, oh, who is minding the one thing necessary? Oh, sirs, ye have but one soul to keep. And will ye lose that? Will ye be at no pains to save your immortal souls? Are ye resolved? Say what we will, that ye will go on in a course of sin, forgetting God and your own soul's salvation. God is crying to you, hold your hand. And we are, we are crying to you, will ye not? Turn from your transgressions by fasting and mourning and supplication. Oh, where will we find you in the last day? The greatest part of you, we fear, will be set among the goats in that day. 
Or will you be prevailed with to turn from your sins and iniquities? Oh, if it were in the power of our hand, we would fain have you take warning to flee from the wrath which is to come. Now remember the text, the axe is laid to the root of every tree. And if you bring not forth good fruit, ye are nearer the hewing down than ever ye were before. Ye know not when this axe will be lifted up and give you the last stroke. Ye know not, but this night your souls shall be required at your hands. <clears throat> oh, are you ready, sirs? Little know how many, little know many of you, how near your day of counting with your judge is. Ye know not, but within twenty-four hours you shall be standing before your judge. Oh, but you have great need to get your peace made up with God and your debt discharged. We fear that there are but few of you that have ever counted with God. Why come ye not, and why flee ye not to the cautioner to be discharged? Oh, how much debt are ye owing, and yet ye sleep sound? Think ye not that justice will call you to an account? Yea, ye shall be called to an account for the least item that ye are guilty of. And if ye die undischarged of your debt, then ye will be cast into the hopeless prison out of which ye will never escape to all eternity. Now there is no less than life and death lying at the stake, but I shall not weary you with, it, with discourse. Ye are wearied of God, and he is wearied of you, and it is like ye shall get your will. He hath not been long threatening to take away the gospel from you, and he hath kept something of it with you after other places have been deprived of it. And now we see you are wearied of it, and this will cause him to take it from you also. And woe will be to you if he, if he depart from you. Hosea 9.12 It is like that ye will be brought to that which Israel was brought to of old, to be without teaching priests. Now what will ye do with his word, as ye have done with many other words? We think the Lord is saying, As I live, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Why will ye die? Why will ye not turn? I would spare you, notwithstanding of all the evil that ye have done, and notwithstanding of all your former barrenness. Or he is saying, I will leave you without excuse in the day when I count with you. What then will you do with this word? Isaiah 55, 10, 11, For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not hither, but watereth the earth, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. The word shall not return void, for if it seal not up salvation to you, it shall, it shall seal up your damnation. You may remember what we were last upon in the forenoon, which was this, that, tr that the trees which bear not good fruit are ready to be hewn down and cast into the fire and that they are trees appointed and prepared for burning. Alas, that there are so many that have brought so much ill fruit forth. What hath been the fruit that many of you have brought forth? Are there not among you Sabbath-breaking, worldly-mindedness, minded, uh, drunkenness, uncleanness, lying, filthy speaking, and many of these sins of which the Apostle tells that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Galatians 5.21 It is also told you who they are that shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. 1 Corinthians 6.9 and 10 Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Revelation 22.15 For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. The wicked are compared to dogs. Cursed Cain was a dishonor to his father, but ye have been a dishonor to God, whom ye should have glorified. Is it not leaves that will do it is not leaves that will do your turn, but it is not a, a profession that will do your turn, but ye must also have good fruit. The foolish virgins had fair leaves. But when the bridegroom came, they were kept out because they had not good fruits. We told you that what was requisite to the bringing forth good fruit, and you may remember that this was one thing requisite, 
that good fruit be brought forth in season. Your fruit must be seasonable as to the time. Young folks should bring forth good fruit in their youth, as good Josiah did, for he brought forth good fruit in his tender age. And John the Baptist began soon to seek the Lord. Old men and old women, ye that are old withered stocks, it is an hundred to one, if ever ye bring forth good fruit in all your days. But will ye go to God and pray him to give you the sense of the evil of your sins? And go to the Prince exalted, the Lord Jesus Christ, and pray him to give you repentance and the free remission of sins. All will you remember that there is no repentance in the grave where ye are going? Therefore, if ye get not repentance and the remission of sin here, ye will undoubtedly perish. Oh, but ye have need to mourn for the many ill-spent days and nights that are gone over your heads and for much ill fruit that ye have brought forth. We told you to give all diligence to make your calling and election sure, for this is a fruit that is well-pleasing to God and profitable to yourselves and that which will yield you comfort in your, in your da- dying day when no other thing can give you pleasure and satisfaction. For if this be wanting, when you must count with God, no other thing will give you solid peace. Therefore delay not this great business. Another fruit is watchfulness, a duty much called for, now when the Lord is threatening to turn all things upside down. After that Christ had foretold the destruction that was coming upon the temple in Jerusalem, he gives this exhortation in Luke 21:36. Watch ye therefore and pray always, that ye may be counted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. But ye may say, What should we watch against? I answer, You should watch against the sins, snares, and errors of the time. Be still upon your watchtower, that the enemy get not an advantage against you. For he is still going about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Also watch unto prayer, watch unto reading, watch unto hearing. Yea, watch unto all duties, for ye that are strangers to watchfulness, ye are strangers to all the duties of Christianity. Therefore watch at all times, in all places, and among all company. David kept his mouth with a bridle when the wicked was before him. Oh, but ye have great need to watch when among wicked persons. Ye that have any name or show of piety, when ye join with the wicked in their sin, ye harden them in their, in their sin and bring an evil report upon the truth. Also, we would have you much in secret prayer, for that is a good fruit and a seasonable fruit for this time. If ever there was a time to draw near to God in prayer, it is now, when all things are threatening desolation. See what the Apostle says in 1 Peter 4, 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Oh, my friends, this is a, this is a time where you are called to be much in secret prayer. We have that charity for several of you that you make conscience of this duty morning and evening. But oh, who is wrestling with the Lord as Jacob did? This is a time wherein we all have need to be much in prayer and to wrestle with the Lord in it. Another good fruit is sobriety. Woe to them that are drinking their wine in bowls and are forgetting the affliction of Joseph. Woe to them that are now surfeiting and satisfying themselves with the creatures and forgetting the afflictions of the Lord's people. Then ye that are professors live soberly as to the use of meat and drink, for this is a part of the duty of sobriety. Be also sober in apparel. There is a pertinent scripture for this, which you may read, Isaiah 3.16, to the end of the chapter. And consider what is said, verse 24, And it shall come to pass, instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. Etc. There the Lord threatens to give them stink instead of perfumes. That we fear, and we fear that many of you spend more time betwixt the comb and the glass than you do at your prayers. As an honest man said when he was coming up the street and looking in at the window, he sees one dressing herself, and when he sees her go oft, so often back and forward to the glass, he came away weeping. 
And one meeting him wondered to see him in that posture, thinking that he had gotten some sad news, and asking him what ailed him. I have, said he, seen one taking more pains and care for her body than I have taken for my soul. Be sober in expressions. That is another part of this duty. It is a shame to hear the expressions of some professors and their discourses so that there is little difference betwixt them and the profane. So then sobriety in meat, drink, apparel, and expressions is a good fruit. Micah 6, eight. He hath showed thee, O man, what is good and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. Also, to mourn with the mourners of Zion is a good fruit. Lamentations 1.12 Is it nothing to you, all ye that pass by? Behold and see, if there be any sorrow like unto my sorrow, which is done unto me, wherewith the Lord hath afflicted me in the day of his fierce anger. O oh, then, would you bring forth seasonable fruit in the time you live in, then sympathize with Zion in this day of her affliction. Would you be the spared in the day of the Lord's fierce wrath? Then mourn for your sins and the sins of the land. Read the ninth chapter of Ezekiel and you will find that when the men with the slaughter weapons went through to destroy, they got a commission to spare all that were marked. And there were none marked but the mourners only. And these were passed by and spared. Oh, but Isaiah and Jeremiah's frame would be a suitable frame in this day that we live in. Oh, but weeping and mourning and supplication day and night were a suitable frame for us this day. There are many things that call for it, threaten judgments and wrath that we may fear shall come upon us, call for it. All things call for it, but oh, we fear that there are but few of you that are crying to the, the prince exalted for repentance and remission of sin. Oh, cry to him that he would pour, pour the spirit of prayer and supplication upon you, that you may cry to him day and night, that he would spare a remnant and not make a full end. For it may be, ere all be done, that a cottage in the wilderness would be thought a sweet lodging. The time is like to come, and not long to it, that the top of the mountain would be thought a sweet dwelling place. It will be your wisdom, therefore, to prepare for that day. Another seasonable fruit this day is self-denial. This is seasonable fruit to be denied to the world and all creature comforts. There are great pains taken in keeping them, and by keeping them many lose their immortal souls. But it is very like that we shall all that we will all be alike in worldly things ere it be long. Ye that have anything of the world be denied to it, loose your grips of it, for if it be not so, it will make you lose your souls. Another thing requisite for bringing forth good fruit, and that is universal fruitfulness, both inside branches and outside branches must be fruitful. There are many that have a fair outside and that inwardly are full of enmity and wickedness. And many that ye would think had fruit on the Sabbath, but through the week care not what they do, but will cheat and backbite their neighbors, and some will separate the two tables of the law. They seem to have respect for the first, their duty to God. But when they come to the second, to the performing of their duty to their neighbor, in that they fail, and thereby they cause the way of truth to be evil spoken of. And others who seem to show some respect to the first, but if you bring forth good fruit, you must have a universal respect to all God's commandments. And all your members must be fruitful therein. Your tongue that hath been employed for Satan must now be employed for God. Your coming forth to preachings will not do your turn. Many come out to the preaching upon the Sabbath that through the week their tongues will go like bells with cursing and swearing. Lord, save us from such professors. Also your head, your hands, and your feet, and all your other, me other members must all be employed in the service of God. For if ye live in omission of any known duty or in the practice of any known sin, it will sink you down to hell. Another thing is that is requisite to the 
bringing forth of good fruit is this, ye must be constant in bringing forth fruit. It must not be by fits and starts, ye must be constant, and continue in your duty to the end, if you would be saved. Oh, how many had been touched at preaching, and have something like a real work upon their soul, who soon have turned like a dog to the vomit to live again in this unflourished fair when the days when these days began that are now but withered branches. But if ye be trees of God's planting, he will make out this to you that it is that is in Psalm ninety two, thirteen and fourteen. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. You should think upon these things as things that concern you very near. Observe again first that although good works be very necessary, they have no hand in our justification, as the papists say. But we are justified only by free grace. Second, although good works be necessary, yet they cannot merit pardon of sin nor salvation. For this we must expect for his free mercy's sake. As you have it in Nehemiah 9.31, Nevertheless, for thy great mercy's sake, thou didst not utterly consume them. And Psalm 106, verse 8, Nevertheless, he saved them for his own name's sake, that he might make known, make his mighty power to be known. Our, own, our good works can merit no good thing in, uh, to us for any good works that, that anybody works. They are wrought by the Spirit of God. But it is not easy for persons to quit their own righteousness and to lay hold alone upon the merits and righteousness of Jesus Christ. Third, though good works be not meritorious, yet the Lord is pleased to reward our good works through Christ. And fourth, Although natural men go about good works, yet they are but an abomination in the sight of God. As you have it in Proverbs 15.3, the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord. For free newsletters and a complimentary copy of our large discount mail-order Christian book catalog specializing in Reformation resources, contact Stillwater's Revival Books. On the web, we are at www.swrb.com by email swrb at swrb.com Our mailing address 4710-37A Avenue Edmonton that's E-D-M-O-N-T-O-N Alberta abbreviated capital A capital B Canada T6L 3T5 by phone 403-450-3730 or after February 1999 with a new area code 780-450-3730 and be sure to take advantage of all the free books we offer on our webpage. It may also interest you to know that James Rennick, as he was about to be martyred for the cause of Christ and his covenanted reformation, spoke the following words, which mirror the six terms of communion in the Reformed Presbyterian Church and the Puritan Reformed Church in our day. He said, Dear friends, I die a Presbyterian Protestant. I own the word of God as the rule of faith and manners. I own the confession of faith larger and shorter catechisms, some of saving knowledge, directory for public and family worship, covenants, national and solemn league, act, acts of general assemblies, and all the faithful contendings that have been for the covenanted reformation. I leave my testimony approving the preaching in the field and defending the same by arms. I adjoin my testimony against popery, prelacy, Erastianism, against all profanity, and everything contrary to sound doctrine and the power of godliness, particularly against all usurpation and encroachments made upon Christ's right, the prince of the kings of this earth, whom alone must bear the glory of ruling his own kingdom, the church, and in particular against the absolute power affected by his usurper that belongs to no mortal, but is the incommunicable prerogative of Jehovah and against his toleration flowing from his absolute power. 
That quotation was taken from John Howey, The Scots Worthies, 1781 edition, page 547, and was cited from the recently published book by Greg Barrow, entitled The Covenanted Reformation Defended, which is also uh, free on our webpage, or which can be purchased through Stillwater's Revival Books. Thank you.